Hello, it's me James, and welcome to another episode of Simply Survival. So, in today's episode, I have got something incredibly amazing for you. That's right, it's incredible and it's amazing. I'm so hyped for this one. Basically, we have got ourselves a dragon trap. This thing completely traps the dragon, and I kid you not, this makes the dragon fight as easy as fighting a chicken. That is not a lie. But before I get any further into this video, please go ahead and click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, if you are also liking the content that I'm producing, please go ahead and smash the like button. If you want to join a free subscriber realm, the link to that is in the Discord. Failing to have Discord, you can always add me on the Twitter or the Instagram. Insta jam. So, that being said, let's get straight on to this video because I'm telling you now, it is so good. Right, so I thought I'd change it up a little bit and actually show you this dragon trap in action, okay? As you can see, the dragon cannot move. I have pretty much taken all of its health off of it and I've not destroyed one end crystal. That is correct. I've not destroyed any end crystals and you can see how much health I've literally took off it and it's took me no time whatsoever. However, to actually get the dragon to die, I'm going to explain that at the end of the video because um, I was a bit confused myself. But that being said, we can get on to exactly what you need. So the things you are going to need to make this dragon trap, you're obviously going to need to respawn the dragon again. So you're going to need four end crystals. You're going to need four pieces of soul sand, um, two buckets of water to make yourself a source block of water. Now, I've got 13 stacks of end stone. You need end stone because the dragon cannot destroy end stone. And yeah, I've got 13 stacks, but you're probably only going to need around 10. Um, it all depends on your landscape and how high you're up and how high you want to build them. But again, you're only going to need around about 10, but I got 13 just to be safe. So you're also going to need a bow and arrow to actually kill this um, dragon once, once he's trapped because um, there's no way to actually get up there and do it via a sword, which is not a problem because this makes it so easy. So step number one, we want to go off each corner of the portal, one block out like I've done, and dig down five blocks. On the fifth block, we're going to place ourselves soul sand, okay? Basically, if you haven't guessed it already, we're going to be making bubble columns. But there's going to be a little twist to these bubble columns. So make sure you watch everything that I do in this video so you make sure you get this right. Because I'm telling you now, you're going to be able to open every single gateway in your end so fast using this method. I'm telling you now, it's one of the best things I have ever seen. So that is corner number one complete. Again, we're going to do this on all four corners. But it is also important that you get them in the right location. So can you see the location that I've got it now? One away from the portal. Um, and we're going to go and do that exactly the same um, thing in the other corners. Okay, so we're going to dig five down. And we're going to place our soul sand on the fifth block down. Reason being, we're going um, this far down because the dragon, when it swoops in sometimes, it can actually destroy... Um, blocks underneath the portal as well, if you didn't know that. The dragon can literally destroy any block in the game apart from endstone, from what I can gather anyway. Um, again, if you've got them far enough down, it will actually protect them because sometimes um, the dragon won't obviously go straight into the trap. It will sometimes swoop down and then get pulled up by the bubble columns. Um, so yeah, you do need to make sure that you do um, go five blocks down to place your soul sand so let me just um complete this one and i think that's all of them complete um let me just double check one two three and four there we go we got all of the four corners already in place so this next step is actually a very vital step so what i would do before you even start building if you are doing this in survival like myself you're going to want to put some places to land um on what i mean by that is um make yourself a source block of water and then next to all of your um soul sand corners you want to dig one out and just simply place a bucket of water a reason being for this when you're on top of the nerd pole and you need to get down if you've not got a leech which i haven't brought my leech into the end with me 
basically you're gonna want to drop down somewhere safe so you don't die this is um definitely the way to go just literally it's so simple get yourself a bucket of water and put them in a diagonal corner from your soul sand holes okay super easy super simple and we're just going to do that on all four corners so in my opinion this step is very vital because you don't want to end up dying a lot of times if you haven't got an elytra already okay so just make sure that you put these waters in the corner because it will save your life like literally it will save your life so then what we can do is actually get our end stone out and get ready to build now like i said you're not going to need 13 stacks but i have just bought 13 stacks just to be safe um Make sure you got those blocks just to be safe. Again, end stone is the only block the dragon cannot break, um, as far as I know. Now, I did try some, like, end stairs and, like, end city blocks, but the dragon can also break those. So, you do want to use end stone. Again, it's not the prettiest of stones, but it will do. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to build this first bubble column um, to the height required, and then I'm going to skip the rest, so obviously it doesn't um, really, really make this video as um, so long, and it doesn't bore you. So basically, I'm going to build this one up like this, but you can do them nerd pole at a time. Now, if you do them nerd pole at a time, you're going to want to make sure you've got access to your water drop, um, so you can drop down, obviously. Now, we're going to take these um, water columns all the way up 30 blocks. So I started on level 62, so that means we're going to go to level 92. Um, but that is not where we're going to put the water in, okay? You don't want to put your water in these columns, okay? We've got to go even higher. So when you actually get to the uh, building your last one, you want to leave... Um, so obviously now you can see we got four columns going up. You want to only make three on your last one because the fourth one is actually going to give us access to the place we need to put the water, which is going to be a lot higher than, um, than 30 blocks above the ground level. Okay. So as you can see now we're at level 78. Um, we've just got to go up another 10 levels from this level. Oh, now we're on level 82, another 10 levels. Um, and we should be about there. Um, again, this step is um, vital as well. You don't want the dragon near the floor while he's cra going crazy because he can actually still damage you and hit you. Um, but this trap will actually stop him completely from throwing um, those dragon breath balls at you, which, again, them things can be really dangerous. However, I wouldn't say he completely stops him. When he's in the trap, he can't fire them. But when he kind of breaks free from it at the end, like you've seen at the beginning, and then he actually died, he did manage to throw one, which isn't all that bad because that means you do have access to the dragon breath. If you bring some little glass bottles in, you can actually get yourself some dragon breath. But I tell you now, this is the safest way to go. Believe you me, I am so high. Which actually reminds me, the guy that showed me this method is called the... Cool dog one two three. Again, I um I fully apologise um for not saying it at the beginning. And again, I think I just got his name wrong. It's Mr. Cool Dog one two three. Again, a massive shout out to this guy. Um, he's a member of the Discord. Again, super awesome. Okay, so now you should have all four towers built. Okay, at this point you can actually take out these water bo blocks at the bottom of the build. Part one, you do not want to take the one that you've only got three columns going up. And you'll see what I mean by the three columns. You want to do that because we need access to where we're actually going to put the water. Again, I completely took all the water out and you'll see what happens if you've not got a way down. Um, so, um, like I said, you need to leave this column that I'm currently going up um, and leave your water in this column as well once you've built all four. Okay, so we're actually going to go up a further 60 blocks um, from the top of our columns purely for the fact when the dragon originally spawns in he spawns in really high now the guy um who showed me this actually said go to around 140 but to be safe in my opinion i would go to around 150 so i'm going to go to 152 and like i said um this way the dragon is not going to be able to destroy your source water blocks which is obviously going to keep him in the trap and he's not going to break them as soon as he spawns in as well so you really want to make sure you get that height because 
because obviously if the dragon is able to hit these blocks um the, the trap is useless there is literally no point in doing it um so make sure you go up on um to about level 150 okay so this middle block here is where our first bubble column will be going down where our first source block of water but first um you need to make yourself obviously a source block up here so we've got a few accesses to water um, in addition to that, I mean, you could always bring um, just like four buckets of water and it would be a lot easier than doing this. But obviously, I only had two buckets on me. So I'm just going to make myself a little um, water source here so I can actually grab those um, water. Again, these blocks, so from the middle bu uh, bubble column um, where we've just placed that source block, it is nine blocks to the other one. So we're going to, that's like two there. And then we're going to go a further six. So, as I just um, made the huge mistake there, I actually broke one of the blocks. If you do this, the water is going to spill out um, over two blocks. You're then going to need to fill the water up again and replace the water, all right? Again, you don't want to make that mistake, um, also it's going to literally spill everywhere, and that is not good, believe you me. Okay, so I'm not actually going to do all of these four corner sort of water block things um, on camera because that would be um, obviously super, super long. However, I am going to do another one so you completely get the distance between each sort of water block. So from here, we're going to go, obviously, we're going to put a block down there just so we've got um, a little block to stand on so we can actually get down. Um, I'll show you doing that, me doing that as well. Um, so from there, we're going to go a further nine blocks. And on the ninth block is actually where the source water block is going to go. So you can actually get rid of that ninth block and then go around it like so. And then obviously you don't need all of the... Um, end stone so you can remove any unnecessary pieces then of course we can get our source water block and put it in and we can just double check by looking down just to make sure we've got the right spot you, obviously you don't want to get these mixed up because you're gonna have water everywhere and you're gonna have to keep changing it so make sure you know the not um the ninth spot is the exact spot you want to put those water sources okay so let me just grab this one and then we're gonna place this in here like so and there we go. So like I said, I'm not going to show you every single one. So I've just skipped forward to where I've done all four. Again, you're going to want to remove any other um, blocks that you've got up here. I completely forgot to remove the actual first source water block that I made. Um, do not make this mistake or she will have to come back up and remove it because it just looks untidy. And if, for example, um, it was to get hit, which um, it won't, but if it did... Um, it's just going to make water go everywhere and that would be super super long You'd have to come all the way back up just to destroy those source water blocks um, So make sure you do it while you're still up there and don't do what I do again This is the um, reason we left this up here in the first place so we can go all the way down on this first nerd pole that we made um, and also uh, at this point I'm going to show you what um, will happen if you do not leave a bucket of water um, on the floor or a block of water on the floor so you can't jump down. I get to level 92 and um, completely realised that my um, I removed the source water block which is not good. Um, I could not get down. Again you can double check that these are all working. You can see the bubbles um, going up. Obviously these won't pull you up. The bubble animation will just be there. So, yeah, like I said, I completely removed the water block, so I'm going to have to try and make this jump again. I actually came so close. Look at how close I came to doing it. Um, uh, to be fair, it was a complete shambles, and, yeah, that's what happens. I died. So, when I finally got back into the end, we had completed the build. Literally, the build was complete. All we got to do now is respawn the Ender Dragon using our four end crystals, and, yeah, we're basically done. So... Again, I made a video not too long ago um, saying this is the easiest way to kill the dragon. Um, believe you me, this right here is the easiest way. Now, now, I'm not a massive fan of using a bow and arrow because I'm just really bad with bows and arrows. But um, you could also use the trident um, to actually kill the dragon if you really wanted to. However, I think an infinity bow and arrow will do you really well. Um, it's probably the best way to go, to be honest with you. So... Like I said, at this point, we can get our end crystals and we can actually respawn the ender dragon. So what's going to happen when you first respawn the ender dragon? It will respawn in between the columns and the source blocks of water in the sky. So you want to make sure 
that um, you're out of the way because the dragon is going to actually fly around at first and he will throw some um, those dragon breath balls at you um, at the start. But like I said, when he gets into the trap, he will not... I repeat, not throw any of those balls at you. Again, it gives this the, the, another reason to be a perfect idea to kill the dragon. Like I said, it takes out all the hard stuff, all the end crystals. You will not have to destroy. You will only have to destroy one. This thing is actually crazy and overpowered for how simple it is to build. So... As you can see, the dragon is about to spawn. For some reason, when the dragon spawns, you do take a little bit of damage. Have no idea, never knew that existed. As you can see, the dragon starts swooping and using those end crystals to try and keep his health up. Um, but soon enough, I actually don't catch it. The dragon actually swoops in and gets trapped. Just like that, he's trapped and he cannot get out. No matter what he's doing, he can't get out. So at this point, um, all you've got to do is keep firing your bow and arrow at it. And you will take off a lot of health. Believe you me, you will take off all the health right down to one more hit. Now, you'll see in this video, I got a little bit confused because I literally thought you could kill the dragon without destroying any end crystals. But it turns out you've got to at least destroy one end crystal. One end crystal is completely nothing. I did it with a bow and arrow. Again, um, you will see that me do that, but I do apologize for my aim. But... As you can see, this guy cannot move whatsoever. It, it physically is trapped in there. And, and you can already see in the short amount of time that I've been speaking since I've been attacking the dragon, look how much health we've took off of it. Um, again, you're probably going to want a really good bow with some good enchantments on it. That's going to even speed up the process even more in killing the ender dragon. So, as you can see, we're really close to the end right now. And when you do get to the end, the dragon starts to glitch out. You see how it goes red just there? Um, so it's like, when you hit it, it, it goes red. The dragon stays a red colour for some reason. I never knew this was a thing. And it does not die until one end crystal has been destroyed, okay? Um, I have no idea why. So, as you can see, I'm kind of confused at this point. Because I'm thinking, oh, it didn't work. This thing didn't work at all. What's going on? But I was wrong. So, at this point, I needed to think, um, what do I do? What do I do? So, um, obviously, I tried to carry on firing at the dragon. But, little did I know, uh, at this point, anyway, you do actually need to destroy an end crystal. Again, this is going to be so, so handy for me because I'm going to actually destroy... Um, not destroy, sorry. I'm going to actually open up every single end gateway. It's something that I really want to do. I've not ever done it in a world before. And it's going to make a really... It's just going to be really good, okay? Um, like I said, anyone who's interested in opening up every single end gateway, uh, this is probably the way to go. Um, no more hard dragon fights trying to get up those pillars, those obsidian pillars to destroy the end crystals. This is the easiest way by far. So, again... At this point, I was still a little bit confused, not know what's going on, because this was actually the first time I attempted this in survival. I'd done it in creative, um, but yeah, I couldn't do it. I literally um, couldn't work out what was going on. So then I started firing at the end crystals once again. So eventually I did actually manage to hit the end crystals. Um, again, I do apologize for my really, really poor aim. So when I did blow that end crystal up, something weird happened, okay? Um, the dragon somehow uh, escaped and threw a one of those balls at me. But again, as soon as he escaped and went to get his health, he completely died. The thing worked and I was so, so hyped. Again, the XP fell over here, which was another bonus because um, most of the time when I end up killing the dragon, it's right in the middle which um, makes the XP go through to the portal, and then it goes through to the original spawn spot of the world. Again, this way, I was able to get all of the XP from the dragon. Um, not a hell of a lot, but still, we was able to get the XP. So, that is literally the end of the video. I hope you guys use this in your world. If you don't, I mean, seriously, you need to, because this thing takes the hardness away from the dragon fry okay so a massive 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 shout out to mr cool dogs at one two three again this guy does not make content on youtube he just added me on xbox and like i say he is a member to the discord um again i no doubt i'll be um, playing with this guy and making some more super cool inventions in the future 
Um, but that is literally the end of the video, guys. Again, if you have liked this video, please smash the like button. And if you've not already, please subscribe. Again, I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody supporting my channel at the moment. And that is literally it for today. I will catch you on the next one.